They're not the rich and famous. Their profit comes not from the thing they sell, but the good they do. Our nation has more than 1.5 million nonprofits that employ one out of 10 Americans, providing services that otherwise go unfulfilled, keeping our community connected when all else fails. But nonprofits often lack the tools to properly promote themselves, to inspire more donors and volunteers and clients to their cause. That's where I come in. I've been in the nonprofit world for nearly 20 years. I connect nonprofits with marketing professionals who donate their time and expertise so that, at the end of the day, these life giving organizations can do more, do better, by creating more. That's right, Buzz. Last time on Buzz, we announced an exciting new partnership with the Roanoke Cultural Endowment and the City of Roanoke to produce six episodes in 2022 that feature our region's arts and culture and the organizations that bring them to life. In the first episode, we showcased how these nonprofits were preparing to bring back a weekend-long arts festival organized by the Taubin Museum of Art called Roanoke Arts Pop, which debuted in 2020 just before the pandemic and was canceled in 2021. Our good friend, Kerry Cousins, president of the American Advertising Federation of Roanoke and director of marketing at Lead Point Digital, created an awesome online campaign to spread the word about the event. Now here on episode two, we are at the Taubin Museum of Art and Roanoke Arts Pop. Well, it's about to pop. <laughs> Keep the energy. Keep the energy. <laughs> Douglas Jackson, the Arts and Cultural Coordinator for the City of Roanoke, Virginia. Hi, I'm Cindy Peterson, Executive Director here at the Talma Museum of Art. Oh, I'm Shalene Powell with the Roanoke Cultural Endowment. Yes, I'm Pedro Salai, the Artistic Director of Southwest Virginia Valley. I am Bernadette B.J. Lark, Artistic Director of Community Arts Reach. It's the second annual winter festival featuring 32 arts and cultural organizations. I'm really excited. I'm ready to celebrate be out, see the community come in, introduce, have everyone see and learn about all the different arts organizations. Big showcase, big, big celebration. I am uh, gonna be uh, helping with the big wheel. So the Roanoke Cultural Endowment and the Roanoke Arts Commission have a big wheel where people can come spin it and they're gonna answer trivia questions. And we hope that folks, when they come to Arts Pop, they're gonna stumble across something new. They might come for one performance, uh, but there's gonna be a whole lot of cross-pollination. Uh, and so we're asking questions about dance and literature and visual art and questions about you, like what you love about the arts or how you uh, find a creative path in the community, how you're making the community a better, a better place through the arts, things like that. It'll start out with Southwest Virginia Ballet performance and the theater. We are doing three ballets, different excerpts. One excerpt from Ties, our railroad historic. We are going to present in May 14th, the full length and Elmwood. And we are performing the beautiful costumes uh, with the Daniel Balls, with a live pianist and uh, Johann Strauss. Last piece I choreographed especially for this event called Silent Chorus from our lovely exposition um, from Eva Rocha from the, who wins the first place in the, um, in the Hotbound uh, exhibition and that's called Silent Chorus especially for this, uh, for the uh, Ronox Art Pop. continues with Community Arts Reach and that is African drumming, song, and dance. We are reminded to keep our eyes on the prize. From our performance tonight, we want people to leave inspired and empowered um, that they can actually intentionally leave with love. We want them to leave reminded that from our past, there's good things that we can pull from 
put it in front of us and use those things from the past to do good works for the future. That willingness is the prize. And then artist Evie Day, who has come in from New York. I'm Evie Day, I'm an artist, I'm from New York City, and I am here at the Taubman Museum with my Divas Ascending exhibition, which is eight costumes from the New York City Opera that are suspended into the characters that they played in the opera. It's so great to be able to uh, go outside, go to museums now, and to be able to see artwork in person because you can really feel it. It's a very different thing. It's a more tactile experience when you get to see it in person with the light, the natural light, and um, also at nighttime if you come here, it's illuminated and it looks great too. But there's something so fun about experiencing it with other people. So I really urge people to come out and come to the museum. And we have interactive stations from numerous arts and cultural organizations, um, and from the Arts Commission to um, Artemis Journal, and the list goes on. Well, I hope people leave inspired. I hope they see something new. I hope they laugh. Gosh, I hope they laugh. Uh, I hope that we all leave a little inspired and ready to do big things and good things in the community. Katrina King, Singh, Strategic Partnerships Manager and Assistant to the Executive Director here at the Taubman Museum of Art. We have so many things happening today. We're going to have performances happening on 30-minute increments from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And those include alternative arts, Artemis poetry readings, Southwest Virginia Ballet, Roanoke Ballet Theater, AMA Ensemble, Roanoke Symphony Orchestra, just to name a few of what's happening today. Virginia Children's Theater is going to be here. So we've got everything for all ages, and we're celebrating really all um, music, theater, dance, two-dimensional and three-dimensional artworks, and then all of the cultural organizations here in the area as well. I am so excited. It is so fabulous to have everybody in the museum. Um, to see it brimming with movement and laughter and joy is just so exciting, and it's a great way to support all of the arts and culture organizations here in our valley. Hi, I'm Kim Davidson, director of the Roanoke Valley Children's Choir, and I've been directing the choir for 35 years. The pandemic has been very challenging for us because singing spreads the virus 27 feet, so it's in, considered a super spreader. And with that in mind, we switched right to virtual rehearsals and all the safety precautions. Main thing was to keep the children safe but it was uncertain for a lot of people. And so we had a big drop in enrollment. 150 people dropped from our uh, choir in the first couple months. It's been a challenge for them, but I'm super proud of the ones we have. They've done a great job. They've learned a lot of things. And my dad always said, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And that's what I've said to these kids. This is an ideal, but we're gonna make the best of it and keep growing our voices. We're so excited to be here and to sing for real live people and there's a big, big group here and everyone is happy and so supportive of all the arts and so we're thrilled to share our music with live people. I'm Johnny Camacho. I'm the president of Alternative Arts Incorporated. We're a nonprofit in Roanoke, Virginia, that produces novel live events and experiences in order to subsidize our free and low-cost arts education. We are trying our best to highlight arts and culture that may be underrepresented. There's not a huge existing output of live comedy in Roanoke like there is in bigger, more established cities. And there is virtually no local busker or street performance scene 
which is a hallmark of all sorts of places around the world. And uh, comedy and street performance are some of the oldest and most democratic art forms in the world. So I hope people get a, a chance to see what we're doing to boost them in our area. My name is Garland Gravely and I am the president and co-founder of Fashionista Roanoke Incorporated. Fashionista Roanoke is a social educational fashion club that we promote fashion here in the Roanoke Valley and beyond. We do fashion shows, workshops, seminars, work with kids through adults and you know everything's fashion, fashion, fashion. Well, we're going to be working with a lot of our local boutiques and a couple of designers that are coming in from out of town. Um, and we're going to create um, art. In, it's all about art, the art of fashion. So the looks are going to be art inspired, like more editorial fashion, a little bit fashion for, but very inspired by the art that we see. It's a great opportunity. I like to show people that fashion is fun and fashion is inspired by the arts. And so we're definitely going to be showing that and encourage people to have fun with fashion and try to create your own artistic, because your body is like a blank canvas and what we wear, you can create your own looks through colors and prints and all that stuff. So. I'm very excited about it. This is one of my favorite events when I first heard about it. We did it uh, back in 2020, and this is, you know, we were invited to do it again this year, so we're excited about that. Hi, I'm Angie Dribben. I'm here with Artemis Journal. We're a literature and art journal featuring voices from the Blue Ridge and beyond. And we've been here today doing a poetry pop-up and sharing the journal and sharing blank journals with new writers and artists. And I'll read this poem today, Look to the Magnolias. Some morning sun strikes with such precision. I reach into the fields beyond the house, pull out the years. We sowed gardens there, fought Japanese beetles off beefsteak tomatoes. I can hear the violets of Siberian iris, trumpets of morning glories, lavender stalks beckoning, wave petunias spilling from front porch pots, the bleeding of geraniums. The kind of morning when birdsong silences sounds of humanity, robin belting from pumelo breast, her cores piercing sun-stilled air, covering the chainsaw of my mind. Years of corn leases and soybeans, now stands of pines. Combine chewed mice, stick barns of gold leaf tobacco, still suspended, long drive. It is these mornings the hair creeps close enough that I can see muscles of her jaws working over blades of Kentucky bluegrass. Good morning, Jeffrey Powell, uh, Director of General Services of the City of Roanoke. And we're here today as a part of our Star City Safe program, which is an initiative in which we're trying to reduce gun violence and within teens in the city. And we brought a group down to participate in the museum today. My name is Nakaya and I'm 15 years old. I think the ballet dances and stuff were interesting. And the some of the parts of the museum, like, where it's movies and stuff, like it's characters from the movies that's in there. And it tells you a lot about them and I think it's interesting. I'm Betsy Kaufman, I'm from Roanoke, I'm here with my family and today we have seen the Artemis booth which is about poetry and there's a, uh, they have some journals and they're gonna have a speaker come so we learned about that and then we watched some of the shows, mainly alternative comedy which is a family friendly comedy and that was really good. And then the Southwest Ballet, my daughter's in it so we watched her and a lot of the ballerinas perform about four different performances. The Tubman, it's so good to be that it's open and it's here again. We're about to go upstairs and see some of the exhibits. So we're going right from downstairs to upstairs. And just seeing they're really supportive of all the arts right here. I think they have the opera coming and they have the symphony coming. So just all in one place, it's awesome. 
My name is Jamie Chiwood and I serve as Programming Manager for Jefferson Center. Jefferson Center brings quality performances to the Roanoke area. Um, we try to maintain affordable tickets and an eclectic season so that there's something for everyone. We are going to be bringing a local octet called Cinematech. They are a surf rock and exotica group that has some influences in jazz and world music. And um, they are just an amazing band with a full horn section and drums and guitars and keys. And we are so excited for them to share their music at the Tallman. <laughs> I'm Sunny Nelson, Deputy Director of Marketing and Public Relations here at the museum. Today is day three of Roanoke Arts Pop, and it's just such an exciting day. It's a day full of literature, poetry, spoken word, and art making, and we're so excited to have everybody, everybody out for it. Hi, I'm Brian Hancock with Soul Sessions Roanoke. I'm the curator and uh, founder for events with Soul Sessions Roanoke. Fighting through those low moments. Insecurities make you lose focus, and I hope it's just beautifully broken. We are who we are. I said I'm fighting through these low moments. Insecurities make you lose focus, and I hope it's just beautifully broken. We are who we are. We operate out of uh, 114 Kirk Avenue, and it's a new uh, venue called Versus. And what we do is we invite all walks of life to come down to speak their truth, uh, open mic poetry and music, just uh, filling the space with just different people, different voices that can help just uplift each other and have like a place where we can meet each other with vulnerability and honesty and, 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 and champion each other in their truth. Now the world seems more hollow with leaders who just follow. However it go down, you better stay solid. From shower to deep, still willing to dive in. Roll with me, go ahead and climb in. I'm out the gate like dogs at protest, grab the tech wars, fierce for the conquest, live and direct from that hot sweat box, that meat cleaver to see that the beef get chopped. Meanwhile, I'm fighting through these low moments. Insecurities make you lose focus. Not hopeless, just beautifully broken. And I am what I am. Thank you. today, the pepperoni pizza. I hope the, the fractions test, I hope he'll be canceled somehow. Uh, my name is Tyler Lyon and I'm the program coordinator for the Grandin Theater Film Lab. The Grandin Theater Film Lab is a nonprofit after school program that teaches filmmaking and the cinematic arts to high school students. Um, they get to do uh, life skills through the, the lens of movie making and make their own short films with each other. Avery, I thought you left us. 
So this weekend, we're here at the Roanoke Arts Pop at the Taubman Museum of Art, and uh, we're actually screening some of the films that our students have made here um, over the last two years. Yes! Go! Uh, I think the really neat thing about Arts Pop is it brings together all these different types of art that you don't normally think about being in the same vein. You can have live theater, music, uh, painting, sculpting, filmmaking, you know, just graffiti, everything in between um, that you don't normally think about. You know, it's all art. It's all arts and culture. Um, so to bring it all together under one roof is a, is a really cool undertaking. Glad the kid got his imagination back. Of course he did. I told you it was a good idea. Well, actually it was my idea. Hi, I'm Esther Hodges. I am 10 years old and I live in Roanoke. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Kathy Killian, and I've been a volunteer all weekend here with Arts Pops. It's been a great opportunity to meet the public and have the public meet us. All ages have been represented, uh, activities galore. It just was a great, a great day of fun yesterday and a little bit quieter today, but still lots of fun and lots of folks. Uh, this has been fantastic. Uh, the best part of it for me has been uh, meeting people in person that I've been working with over Zoom for the last two years. Uh, and it's been almost like a little reunion in a, in, a, in a really strange and wonderful way. This has been super exciting. We, we have talked to um, at least 200 groups of people. So that's probably 500 people all together we've talked to about what we care about with the arts in Roanoke, what we can do to make the arts even stronger. It's been a great weekend. Hi, I'm Kathy Greenberg and I'm a volunteer for the Roanoke Cultural Endowment and this weekend has been wonderful. The, more than a thousand people came through on Saturday and it's an incredibly diverse, social, engaged crowd who care deeply about the arts. I'm Gene Moreno, local radio print and TV journalist. And I think that an event like this is great because you're going to get people in the door here that normally don't come to a museum or get too involved in the arts. Here they can come, they can you know, learn more about the arts, and maybe some of them will say, you know what, I'm going to support the arts in the future. So I think arts pop is a, is a great thing. I met a guest who um, said to me, you know, I did not realize that Roanoke had a ballet of this caliber until I came out to this event this weekend, and now I'm going to go out and buy tickets. And that's really what it's all about, is just discovering those arts organizations and all the things that we have to offer here in Roanoke. So I'm really glad to hear stories like that, that people are really enjoying learning about the arts and culture in Roanoke. Give us something about Roanoke Arts Pop. Roanoke's Arts Pop, you don't stop, we love it. Everything about it, you know we're not above it. We're all in together with a community to serve the purpose and everything that you know. I'm not nervous talking to Buzz for good. We all art and we're right here in your neighborhood. Freestyle flow off the top of my brain, and I'm saying this, letting you know I'm in my lane. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. That was awesome.